Hello, my name is Fraser Simons. This is my channel, Springboard Thought. Today I want to do a long list Booker 2022 review again of The Seven Moons of Molly Alameda. This book, I put it this way, when I described it to Shelley Swearingen, she said, so it's kind of like Beetlejuice. And that is not a comparison that I would have made myself because I haven't seen that movie in forever. But it is kind of like Beetlejuice. <laughs> Um, the story starts off when Molly has been already killed. He's in a in-between world, which basically think of um, him being in the world as we know it, yet able to see other things, spiritual beings such as himself, his soul or his corporeal, non-corporeal form uh, is present and he's in a Kafka-esque waiting line uh, and people are telling him what he needs to do and he doesn't really understand it. They say that he has seven moons uh, to get to the light, which then will in transition him to the next phase of which nobody will tell him what that is. Um, it is seems very much linked to Buddhism, so he will probably be taking the leap into reincarnation in some form or another. Um, based on his current life and interestingly they say that everybody should get their ears read because they're as intricate and um, unique as a fingerprint only for you know his his soul basically they can tell you how many lives you've lived uh, what you've done sin wise like how heavy I guess your soul is um, and a few other things However, there's a person there, Senna, who is saying basically that the bureaucracy is not like going to give him any retribution. It's not going to give him any answers. He doesn't remember how he died, uh, and he wants to know that, <laughs> understandably. Um, and we get snippets of his past interspersed with what is happening in the present day. But essentially he has amnesia and he's uncovering this uh, with the help of this person who is unscrupulous, basically. He's learning how to negotiate the city, what the rules are, the world building around that is, I would say, uneven. It's kind of a lot all at once in the beginning. And then it sort of peters out and there's nothing more to tell you, maybe around like halfway in or something like that. Um, which was a little bit unfortunate because it was really interesting. Um, it's obviously based on uh, belief system and spirituality, mythology, folklore in Sri Lanka where this is set and where the author has grown up himself. Um, and so this book is really interesting and unique. It is not overly concerned with painting you the picture of Sri Lanka. So if you're going to pick this up thinking that you're going to be able to imagine the streets and uh, the people and all that kind of stuff. It's not concerned with that pretty much at all. I would say 70% of this is dialogue, most of it unattributed, um, though flows very well and it's very clear who is going to speak based on the number of people in the scene and what they want. So it won't be confusing, but it is less interested in that kind of specificity, both in terms of description as well as like the mannerisms and the intricacies, choreography of the characters in a scene. It's, um, and it's still fairly long too, 368 pages or so, I think, or 386 pages, I believe. So it does have some middle book syndrome uh, in terms of pacing mechanic. It's very interesting off the get-go. And then I think it struggles a little bit as it really wants to communicate certain things the author, I think, is really interested in with Molly's life. We learn that he's a photographer, uh, a wartime photographer. This is set in 89, so there's a major conflict, and it outlines that very well um, and very clearly, who the factions are and what they want. Uh, and basically, we discover that he's mixed up in a lot of different things. He's not a very nice guy, I would say. Uh, and he's living a queer life in Sri Lanka. 
and in a queer relationship under the cover of a standard relationship with a woman who he has a complicated relationship with. Uh, and he seems to have a one-sided relationship with everybody, basically. He's not very good at getting close to people. He's kind of a jerk. Uh, he has a number of foibles and flaws, basically, that will make you very endeared to him. Even though he's not like an anti-hero, he is definitely not the typical protagonist of these kind of stories, I think, where it's like light versus dark, uh, puritanical, and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's very interested in unpacking the political situation and the galvanization and polarization of the populace that continues to take the lives of the civilian population. I think it's a really good job at um, explaining the conflict, what is happening, who's it's harming, and why the social constructs around it, the in-groups, the out-groups, and certain things like that. And then on top of that, um, you have the queer layer of it as well that he's trying to negotiate as well as his partner. So uh, there's a constant mystery throughout it because it's also set in, um, or said in a second person and he seems to be the target audience. So because he has amnesia, the second person gels quite nicely and organically, I think. Normally, I, second person is, is something that needs to be justified, um, and I think this book does that. Other books do not, and I am not a fan of it generally. <laughs> but um, it is very off-kilter strange. I would say it's like tonally vacillating between funny and incredibly sad. Um, it's very interested in interrogating the things that I mentioned more so than driving the plot home. So I would say it's not overly plot or character driven actually it's more concerned with like a peripheral component of it at least for the middle part of the book. It goes from heavily plot driven to this interrogation and world building and building out of the world to character driven at the end, which is interesting and mostly works. It's a four star read for me. I quite enjoyed it. It was a little bit of a slog and it will probably be a little bit of a challenge at some point just because of the structure that I mentioned. If you're really into plot, you're gonna be like, great. And then it'll transition into a place where you're not that interested because there's three different types of interest over the course of, I think, eight chapters or so. The seven moons are different chapters, and then there's this sort of like epilogue-ish thing happening. Uh, so I think that in order to latch, you might be a reader that latches onto every component of it, but more than likely, you should sort of gird yourself and be prepared for one component of this, this to not uh, totally work for you. But I can see why it was listed. It's very imaginative. It's very interesting. Uh, it is very literary, uh, tied to this sort of magical realism um, fantasy component, and definitely subverts those expectations for those readers as literary intersections with genre fiction tend to do. So yeah, I, I would recommend it. I think it's very... Um, Fun. It becomes very poignant at the end, and it does nail the ending in such a way that it is it is worth whatever part of the book is a slog for you. Uh, and that's it. I will be back with some more long list reviews in the future. Hope you're doing well, keeping safe, keeping healthy, and I will speak to you later.